Right, here's a quick preamble before I get started to any conservatives watching. What I've recorded here is harsh and gets very heated. Uh, I want to say beforehand that if you are a conservative, please at all times have an open mind to what I say. We share with you the same principles of individual freedom and all the great things which come from it. I will give examples of how we follow these principles consistently in areas where conservatism has turned a blind eye or outright violated these principles. I really hope that if you agree that freedom is the highest of all goals that you will understand my points and consider them for what they are. The main libertarian community does not support Trump or really any major figurehead of his neoconservative movement. The belief among conservatives is that they are the people who lift up the torch of liberty, that they are the golden saviours of freedom and the United States Constitution, and we get pissed off hearing this because we have come to know this to be very untrue. There was a time where you might have been able to argue that Trump was the candidate of freedom. It would have never really been a very compelling one to be perfectly honest, but it was once possible. But during his time of nearly four years in the big seat, none of it has been realised. Remember the time he said the eight-year assault on the Second Amendment has come to a crashing end? Well, after his bump stock ban, proposed suppressor ban, increasing ATF restrictions, red flag gun confiscation laws, the time he said take the guns first, do due process second, a current congressional budget of $25 million for anti-gun propaganda, Bill HR 838 authored by a Republican senator for Texas, which allows surveillance of all gun owners which violates the Fourth Amendment as well as the Second, multiple bipartisan bills that seek to register all guns and ammunition on a federal database and require licenses, all of these things just to name a few, and that speech becomes nothing more than a poorly aged joke. And oh how used we are to hearing, but the Democrats are worse. Doesn't that just tell you that the entire system is royally screwed when a party that is constantly committing such extensive anti-Second Amendment action is in fact a better option than the alternative? It is now an undeniable fact that the Republican Party at large only cares about the Second Amendment when the Democrats are in power and allows it to be trampled on when it's their turn. The Trump administration has overseen more gun control measures than Obama ever did and in only half the time. The Republicans held the House and Senate for a whole two years and the story was exactly the same, so during that time it wasn't even a valid excuse to call the actions a compromise, and regardless, that is never a valid attitude to apply to your natural, inalienable right to bear arms in self-defence. <clears throat> this rhetoric I've just given regularly gets conservatives extremely angry, despite how they claim that they're not snowflakes and they're the ones who have thick skin often quick to point out how much gun control there is in my country, as if that makes any difference, and anyway, if a Brit needs to tell you how bad things are, they're probably far worse than I can even say. Okay, I'm going to dial it down now, because it's not the smartest idea to go out of the way to make enemies with neoconservative citizens. Our core values and principles often come from the same sources, a love of liberty as defined by the Founding Fathers. We maintain the position that the good values of such people are abused by the political system which does so much against them. The Trump administration is careful to introduce these measures quietly and to continue to use the NRA as their speaking platform and that they're here to protect rights only as a smokescreen to then do the exact opposite. The fact of the matter is, if you stand for individual liberty, the government in its current form will never be your friend. Year after year, it will weaken the once strong foundations that uphold freedom slowly enough that you won't think to question it until it's too late, and it might even be too late now. Our effort is to alert these people who have had the wall pulled over their eyes as to what's happening while the media tells them they need to be outraged over what Iran or California is doing, as a way of distracting them from the injustice which is occurring right on their own doorstep. Claiming that you love freedom, and believing other people just for saying they do, is not enough. Actions really do speak louder than words, and for that the Republican Party is screaming tyranny. Now I also recently did a video explaining how libertarianism is pro-immigration, but it is not in the way that you might think. If you don't know why that is, I encourage you to watch that before I make this next point about Trump and the wall. Not only is it funny that nearly four years later the wall is tiny and literally falling over, it also signifies an expansion of government power against its people for two huge reasons taxation and eminent domain. The wall commands a huge sum to build, from a pool of tax money that should always be kept to a minimum if you believe in the freedom of keeping the money that you earn instead of the government taking it from you. The millions of dollars required can do far greater good for people who the money belongs to, rather than as an expense concerned with other people in an entirely different country. But the use of eminent domain is a far greater threat to freedom still, 
The precedent that the government can forcibly remove the land of its citizens at will is abhorrent to the liberty of all citizens. The point that the government gives you money for it is entirely irrelevant when it's a take it or leave it sum, and if you refuse, the best case for you is that men with guns take it from you, and the worst case is that those men lock you away or kill you if you attempt to resist. One of the biggest faults of the entire constitution is how the Fifth Amendment stated that private property can be removed with compensation. It has led to genocide against the native population during Manifest Destiny, allowed disgusting corporations to make the government seize family ranches along the frontier to give to oil barons and mega farms, and enabled unprecedented overreach of the executive branch of the federal government in examples like that of Clive and Bundy and the standoff at Bundy Ranch in Nevada. It's a great crime that conservatives praise this method when it's used for something they want and largely remain silent when it's used for something that's not of particular interest to them. The fact remains, tyranny is tyranny whether you like it or not. We do not support wars of aggression or military intervention that is not of direct national self-defence. Every war that the United States has fought in since the end of World War II goes against this, and Britain is the same with the only exception being the Falklands War. It is not at all patriotic to send your friends and family members to a desert thousands of miles away and quite possibly die. A great deal of veterans end up becoming libertarians because they join the military, with the aim of defending their nation and the freedom within it, but come out of their service with the stark realisation that they were entirely misled in that goal and then abandoned. Our countries have been fighting in the Middle East for decades, and every single time it has been found to be for a total lie. Saddam Hussein did not have weapons of mass destruction. The only country that was in any way linked to 9-11 was Saudi Arabia, and we invaded Iraq and Afghanistan. Now, more Americans have been killed over there than even were in the 9-11 attacks, Marines are arriving in Afghanistan who weren't even born when the war first started, and the Afghanistan papers were recently released outright proving that it was completely started over lies. There have been more than 10 whole years of government promises that our troops would withdraw from the Middle East to absolutely no avail. If you claim to support the troops, you cannot support these wars and the politicians who wage them. From the very start, they only serve to fill the bank accounts of politicians and their beneficiaries with money soaked in the blood of men and women of both sides. Of course, the Democrat and Labour parties are no better off in this regard, as Obama oversaw thousands of drone strikes which frequently only killed civilians, Hillary Clinton is a totally vampiric warmonger, and our own Tony Blair should be sentenced in The Hague as a war criminal. But when the military budgets remain at levels which are beyond absurd, and we become no more free from it, once again we can derive that the entire system is just screwed and not worth upholding. We are also, for the most part, not friends of the police. The Founding Fathers explicitly warned us that a country which is constantly at war will always bring it back home with the mobilisation of a standing army commanded by the government which overpowers the citizenry and can therefore reign tyranny as much as they please. The only police force they envisioned was the armed citizen and his militia. Yet police departments in the US are constantly expanding their budgets at a ridiculous rate to buy MRAPs, APCs, helicopters, grenade launchers, and all manner of things that the police will kill a citizen for owning, and George Washington must be rolling in his grave. There is nothing in the Constitution which enables the federal criminalisation of drugs, and lots of them grew and used marijuana themselves. The war on drugs, first introduced by conservative poster boy Ronald Reagan, has been the perfect excuse for the police to extend their reach in these ways and has been the almost exclusive use of the insane constitutional violation known ironically as the Patriot Act. Because of this ludicrous power which is now available to police officers, there is a disgustingly frequent amount of abuses being found. Unlawful entry, seizure of property, use of force and all the way to outright rape, murder and domestic abuse have genuinely become common. And if you don't believe me, I will give a link to the Instagram page of my podcast co-host called Bootlickers Beware, who posts constant screenshots of news articles showing this. With this being said, it does not apply to all officers. At the recent Virginia gun rights rally, there were honestly a lot of cops who went there just to support the protesters. After all, they do swear an oath to protect the Constitution. But it can no longer be argued that the power of the police has a long time ago exceeded any of the kind that is required to protect it. Now this has almost been entirely based around the US, which I know is odd considering I don't even live there, so I'll end by going into the inconsistencies of conservatism in my own country. In the UK, they don't put the value of freedom on anywhere near as high of a pedestal, which yes, does already sound terrible. 
but they like to use the torch as their symbol, which does represent liberty. Even Britannia, the personification of the country and the subject of my own display picture, is meant to be a representation of the Roman goddess called Liberty. But who can tell me a single thing that the Conservative Party has done in favour of individual liberty ever since Margaret Thatcher was in power? Even she doesn't stand up to the libertarian criteria in literally every area except for economic policy, of which there are still many grievances to be had. The Conservative Party led by Boris Johnson has just officially withdrawn us from the European Union, which on its own is a great thing, but only half of the party's members of parliament even wanted this in the first place. The process has taken three and a half years just to finalise because they care so little about the dangers of government overreach that half of them would rather have two overreaching governments instead of just one. We have socialised healthcare in this country in the form of the NHS, a golden cow that the Conservatives worship. They do so because according to them, leaving healthcare up to the private sector would result in disastrous monopolies that would put the public at great risk. So their solution to this is, of course, to make healthcare a literal monopoly of the bloody government. Now it is common to wait six to nine months for crucial and basic procedures and it is an act of social suicide in this country to oppose this system. Fucking ridiculous. And of course we have essentially no right to bear arms to speak of. Not even pepper spray is technically legal to own here. Everyone listening needs to go and look up the 1999 case of Tony Martin, a farmer who shot and killed a recurring burglar on his own property and was then convicted of murder with a life sentence for it. It was only then reduced to manslaughter when his defence team pleaded diminished responsibility. It makes me absolutely sick and furious, but nobody else in this country seems to care at all. Now I believe that the ones I've mentioned are the most obvious and stark contrast between conservatives and libertarians, but there are many others that we seek to enhance the individual freedom of, such as sexual, racial, gender, all sorts of uh, equality like that. We are totally free trade, we stand against the idea of tariffs, and of course we love to say taxation is theft. Anyway, I really should stop there for the time being. The fact remains that we both want the same underlying goal. The fatal flaw is that conservatives have found themselves too busy engaging in identity politics and matters of totally trivial importance to remember what the goal is. I'll leave you with a saying that libertarians use a lot to express our eternal desire for individual liberty. I want gay married couples to be allowed to defend their untaxed marijuana farm with fully automatic assault rifles. <laughs>